Welcome to the second lecture. In this video, we will take a look how to present data. The second lecture is named as Introduction to Biostatistics and Methods of Presentation of Data. The report is prepared by Musina Darika. I am a teacher of public health and biostatistics at Semi State Medical University. So, I believe that you take advantage of this part. Okay, let's start the lecture. Data presentation is a method by which people summarize, organize, and communicate information using a variety of tools, such as diagrams, distribution charts, histograms, and graphs. There are three methods, numerical, graphical, and mathematical. Data can be summarized numerically either in the text or in tables or plotted in a graph. When numbers are given, there is no problem of how precisely to specify them. As far as possible, the numerical precision used should be consistent throughout the paper and especially within a table. The choice between using a table or figure is not easy. Tables are suitable for displaying uh, information about a large number of variables at once, and graphs are good for showing multiple observations on individuals or groups. The methods used to present mathematical data vary widely. Common presentation modes include encoding data, data analysis, drawing diagrams, box plots, tables, pie charts, and histograms. Example of numerical presentation of data. The table illustrates the number of patients at the surgical department of Paudar Hospital in April 2015, according to their blood groups. It is noticeable that the number of patients who have the second group are higher than others, 36% out of 50, while the number of patients with the third blood groups is the smallest, only 10% out of 50. The next example is almost the same as previous. Uh, the table depicts distribution of 50 patients at the surgical department of Astana Hospital in April 2015, according to their age. Uh, in this case, variable is age. It is 2 by 2 table. The given table presents results of case control study. It gives information about distribution of 60 patients at the chest department of CMA Hospital in April 2015 according to the smoking and lung cancer. So, people who don't smoke, they don't have lung cancer. In this case, 32 patients don't have lung cancer and they don't smoke. It is approximately 87%. People who smoke, they have lung cancer in 15 uh, cases out of 20. It is under 65%. The next method is graphical presentation of data. It can be line graph, frequency polygon, frequency curve, histogram, bar graph, scatter plot, funnel plot, pie chart, and statistical maps. Example graphical presentation of data. The line graph compares life expectancy between four countries from 1960 to 2014. As can be seen from the graph, all countries have upward trends. According to the given information, it is observed that the highest life expectancy is in Kazakhstan, whereas the lowest is in Pakistan. The next table depicts distribution according to the age and gender. For drawing frequency polygon, we can calculate midpoint of interval for showing trends. So, this illustration is frequency polygon. Frequency polygons are graphical devices for understanding the shapes of distributions. They serve the same purpose as histograms, but especially helpful for comparing sets of data. Frequency polygons are also a good choice for displaying cumulative frequency distributions. It is also possible to plot two cumulative frequency distributions in the same graph. Frequency curve can also be drawn with the help of histogram by joining their midpoints of rectangle. A histogram is a set of rectangles whose areas in proportion to class frequencies. It is a graph in which frequencies are represented by bars. The histogram appears as series of bar graphs placed one next to the others in a vertical way. In this example, uh, the figure shows distribution of 100 cholera patients uh, by age. Graphs of frequency distributions. Prism gives you three choices illustrated below. XY graph with points, uh, XY graph with spikes, bars or a bar graph. 
The last two graphs look very similar, but the graph on the right is a bar graph, while the one in the middle is an XY graph plotting bars or spikes instead of symbols. The graph in the middle has X values, so you can fit a Gaussian distribution to it. The graph on the right has no X values, just category names which happen to be numbers, so it's not possible to fit the curve. The next graphical illustration is funnel plot. It is funnel plot for treatment costs of breast cancer. The graph depicts uh, the dispersion around the mean cost blue line for each provider black dots as function of the hospital values. The red lines represent the 95% confidence interval around the mean. This is scatter plot. Scatter plots are similar to line graphs in that they use horizontal and vertical axes to plot data points. However, they have a very specific purpose. Scatter plots show how much one variable is affected by another, and the relationship between two variables is called their correlation. Scatter plots usually consist of a large body of data. The closer the data points come when plotted to making a straight line, the higher the correlation between the two variables, or the stronger the relationship. A pie chart is a circular statistical graphic which is divided into slices to illustrate numerical proportion. Uh, the given pie chart estimates cancer 5-year prevalence proportions by major sites in Sub-Saharan Africa in 2012 among adults. Many maps portray statistical data. Statistical map presents numerical data superimposed on a map of the geographical units to which the data are related. Also, the same data could be presented in a table or a bar chart. The map image helps the reader associate the data more directly with specific ge geographic areas. Bar chart is a graphic that uses two or more rectangles along with vertical and horizontal axes to represent information. When the rectangles are placed vertically, the chart is sometimes called a column chart. When the rectangles are placed horizontally, the chart is often called horizontal bar chart. Ok, uh, the given bar chart presents incidence and mortality of selected cancers before age 70 years in low and middle income countries in 2012. It's clear from the bar graph that incidence of breast cancer and mortality of lung cancer took the first place. The next method of data presentation is mathematical. It can be measures of location and dispersion. Uh, I would like to tell about measures of central tendency, mean, mode and median. The first measure is a mean. Example is given. The mean is obtained by adding all the values in a population or a sample and dividing by the number of values that are added. The second measure is a median. The median of a finite set of values is a value which divides the set into two equal parts, such that the number of values equal to or greater than the median is equal to the number of values equal to or less than the median. In the first example, median is 58, uh, and in the second example, median is 30, it is the middle value. The third measure is the mode. The mode of a set of values is that value which occurs most frequently. If all the values are different, there is no mode. A set of values may have more than one mode. Uh, in the first example, uh, mode is 20 and 27, and in the second example, no mode. One way to measure the variation in a set of values is to compute the range. The range is a difference between the largest and the smallest value in a set of observations. If we denote the range by R, the largest value by XL and the smallest value by XS, we compute the range as follows. In the given example, range is 28. Measures of dispersion. It is range, variance, standard deviation, coefficient of variation, standard error. So it will be on the next lecture. Thanks a lot for paying attention. Goodbye.